Maggie and I are both a motorcycle riding adventure couple who travel all around the world. I would have never gotten into ADV riding if it hadn't been for the Harley Davidson Pan America, but I've always been borrowing bikes. I got into ADV riding when I bought a Pan America the first year that they came out. And my biggest problem is I haven't actually really had anybody to ride with. I'm going into 2024 a Pan America owner. And now, finally, we both have Pan Americas together. Oh yeah, now we're talking. All right, we can work with this. What do you got planned for us? First, we're gonna ride from here to Jean Dry Lake Bed. From Jean Dry Lake Bed, we're gonna ride through some sand. We're gonna go over a crazy pass, and then the rest is a surprise. Coming into Vegas from California, we see these rainbow mountains, but not everybody knows that right behind them is the Jean Dry Lake Bed. Did you actually know where the Seven Magic Mountains get their name from? No. The Seven Magic Mountains back here. They line up with them. I love camping out here. It's public land, so you can camp anywhere. We've had many a good bonfire. We actually spent Thanksgiving out here. We've done photo shoots, including your little hot dog photo shoot. <laughs> Also, if you're somebody who's not comfortable in off-road, this is super compact dirt. You can still get that off-road feel and you can come kind of feel the counterbalance, feel that less than ideal traction and practice on your bike. And what kind of things would you practice out here? Great place to practice braking out here because you'll feel that slip, but you don't have to worry too much about it. Yeah, actually a really good place to do like some power slides. Yep. Start to kind of feel that back end move around. Yeah. Yeah. Nice power slide. Thanks. Did you get the shot? I got the shot. Sick. Let's go ahead and get going. Yep, sand section coming up. Ooh. Ready? All right. We've made it to the sand section. Oh. oh. <laughs> Camera effects. Action. <laughs> <laughs> we go straight or that way? There's probably two roads that run parallel, so just stay on whatever side looks easier. What are some things in training that we learned that we can impart on our friends out there? The big thing that I learned is like, get into second gear because you're really gonna wanna ride through this and you don't wanna be feathering your clutch through sand because you're gonna burn it out. You wanna keep that momentum because that momentum and putting power on that rear wheel is gonna keep that front tire out of the sand. Rear brake is the way to go if you need, and ass back. Yeah, you're not really steering with the front. You're actually steering mostly through your feet and your weight. If the handlebars get sloppy, don't fight them. Don't stiffen up. That's when That's problems the worst are gonna part. happen. That's when you just shoot off, which you'll probably see me do. <laughs> <laughs> I got my legs stuck. Nope. And I'm stuck. What happened there? Good. You're good. You got it. And I don't got it. What are you doing in your underwear, Justin? So I was wearing pants under my pants. I just took them off. They're completely soaked right now. It's tough. I mean, uh, last time I came through, I didn't have all this gear, but made it through. I feel like the training came into play for sure. I think the biggest challenge is getting that first momentum. You know, like the bike just starts to kind of wiggle out. You got to get going. Once you get going, then it seemed a lot easier to just keep going. It is also much easier with less gear. I like it spicy. <laughs> but that is definitely not a beginner trail for sure. This is starting of the pass. Like on that corner, I stay on the right. And as you come in, you kind of Go to the left. And this section is really a lot of like big rocks. Yep, this corner is one of those corners I was talking about. You gotta keep momentum going. Nice. And the bike might start to kind of slide out a little bit under you, but you just gotta keep going forward. Another big thing is there's gonna be a cliff on one side. So this is where object fixation is super important. So don't be looking off to the side. Be looking forward where you wanna be going, not where you don't wanna go. That was a 
almost really bad. If I remember correctly, that was the worst of it. You don't know how to get these here. All right, we came all the way up here. How was that last section? A uh, bit rocky. How about you? I heard you got stuck back there. Definitely need a momentum. That was just like a bunch of chunky rocks. All right, well, I dug myself into a hole. It's our view. Start to see solar panels in there. That was intense. Yeah. I'm glad we got some slab for a little bit. There is a great slab route out here, but we definitely took the difficult way. And what is this place called? This is the Nelson Ghost Town. So this place is cool. I mean, we've been out here a couple times. We did a photo shoot actually for the HD Museum. And it's just this like really interesting, eclectic spot. They have all kinds of like antique cars and trucks. There's actually a gold mine nearby where you can do a tour. People can get married here. Yeah, and if you do come out here, a big thing to know is, and we're actually right now dealing with this, but you have to come in and check in if you're gonna do a photo shoot. And there is a store, but I don't know what they're really selling there. So I feel like they have like voodoo heads and stuff. It's a ghost town. It's a ghost town. Should we hit Nelson's Landing? Yeah. We made it. We've gone camping out that way, but I haven't actually seen this. How epic is this? I mean, so to put things in perspective, Hoover Dam is that way. Yeah. And this is just down river from the Hoover Dam. I so feel like cool. we're still also downstream from some of the hot springs that are up there. That's right. So there's some really good hot springs to check out around this area that come down close enough where you can hit the hot springs and then jump in the Colorado River. We better hit it. I know, if we're gonna make it to camp, we better get out of here. Mm. Where do you get this? The gas station. That last part was really cool. So we've been out here before and we camped down by the water. Yeah. But I think being elevated this time really gives us a beautiful view. This will be the perfect spot. <laughs> Hang on, I drilled man pills. All right, so one of the first things that I do when I get to camp is get a little more comfortable. So I pack my shoes here. These are hiking shoes. These big boots are a pain in the butt to get around on. It's definitely nice to have something a little more comfortable. We brought the tarp with us and it serves a couple different purposes. I like that it's not tearing up my seat when we load firewood onto the bike, as well as it's always nice in this kind of like rocky terrain to be able to lay this down where we want to set up. So what makes this tent particularly different from other tents is you can see each of these segments is super short. And the advantage to that is you're able to fold it smaller and fit it in something like a pannier a lot easier. I definitely would suggest if there's two of you to actually get a three person tent because then you can store your gear in the tent with you at night. When you're out here in the desert, there are things like scorpions and tarantulas. I got a couple camping chairs. They're nice and tiny, easy to pack, easy to set up. Whoop. <laughs> All right, do you want risotto with chicken or Southwestern quinoa and beans? These Moscow Moto bags, so clever. How would you rate the day? I think it's a little bit more difficult just because your bike was loaded down a bit more than mine as well too. It's rough like having to pick up a big heavy bike that's loaded down a lot. I yeah. was definitely tired by the end of that. I feel like that section that we got to going over the pass was also pretty difficult. Yeah. You know, and, and dangerous. Like, and you can't do this on a regular cruiser bike. Nope. So, Hell of a way to break in a new Pan Am. All that being said, I do feel like this last section that we did just now, that's something that if you're kind of like beginner intermediate, 
you could make it through. The only thing you'd need to have some practice with is getting through gravel. Yep. And then getting through sand a little bit. But otherwise, like, this wasn't too hard. Views out here are amazing. This is a super cool campsite if you have any bit of off-road skill on your bike to come out to. Like, this is just a really unique spot that's literally an hour from the strip in Vegas. Yeah, you wouldn't think that Las Vegas is so close to this. All right, I'm Justin. And I'm Maggie. And, and this, this is, is the, the way, way we roam. roam.